Thank you all for coming. I'm Apsara de Quincy. I'm the curator of modern and contemporary art and the matrix curator here at BAM PFA. And tonight we're celebrating the opening of Matrix 259, which features the work of the San Francisco-based group Will Brown. It's a collaborative project of David Kasperzak, Jordan Stein, and Lindsay White. For several years, Will Brown has operated a storefront gallery in the Mission District, which was known for its innovative exhibitions. For this exhibition, Will Brown brings its probing and pro provocative approach to BAM PFA, highlighting a nearly forgotten site-specific work by the minimalist artist Dan Flavin for his exhibition here in 1978. Flavin's work, entitled Untitled for Gretchen, A Colorful and Fond Match, serves as the conceptual springboard for the exhibition. It consisted of 28 green fluorescent lamps installed in the, in the building's light well. Its green glow engulfed the museum's main stairway, spilling out into the lobby and then through the skylight onto the museum's facade. A picture of it can actually be seen on the banner down um, the way a little bit, hanging on the building's facade. As many of you are probably aware, BAM PFA is closed right now as we prepare to move to our new building, um, which will open in January downtown. Um, during this period, we've been doing a series of off-site matrix exhibitions, and this exhibition specifically was conceived for this nomadic period. So instead of taking place inside of the building, as you can see, it takes place around it. It consists of the following components. One, a seemingly abandoned car positioned in front of the now closed entrance, which is conceived of as a kind of metaphor for the current state of the museum, as well as a pseudo archive for the Matrix exhibition series. I encourage you after the performance to come down and take a close look um, if you haven't already because there are a lot of really exquisite details to be seen and found. Um, the second is an alluring light installation which takes place on the roof's uh, building and it looks really spectacular at night so I encourage you to stay um, so that you can really see it at its prime. Um, the next is um, an artist book, which is at UC Berkeley's Morrison Library, housed in Doe Library. And this is conceived of as a kind of living archive for the project. So I encourage you to make it over there to see that. It too glows green upon opening. And finally, we have um, this play, New Light on Riboflavin, which you are about to see. And it was newly commissioned by um, Bay Area writer Kevin Killian. And um, it was conceived of to amplify the sense of myth and fiction that are important to Will Brown's work. So Will Brown links all of these four objects and events with Flavin's enigmatic green light. So Kevin Killian is a poet, author, editor, and playwright. He has written many books, poems, and plays over the years. His book on the collected poetry of Jack Spicer, co-edited by Peter Gizzi, won the American Book Award for Poetry in 2009. A co-founder of Small Press Traffic and San Francisco Poets Theater. He often writes farcical, campy plays to benefit those organizations. If you haven't seen a Kevin Killian play, I should explain that the actors are not professional actors. <laughs> but the plays typically star Bay Area artists, poets, and members of the art community. New Light on Riboflavin is a riff on Will Brown's exhibition. It's set in 1972, a time when the medium was the message. And in Will Brown's work, I should say the exhibition is the medium, and in this case, the museum is the stage. Thank you for coming, and I hope you enjoy the show. Miss Tricks, Miss Tricks, did you hear the crash? Yes! 
Whoa! Dead ride. I came running to see. Well, never mind. Jimmy J, what is what has happened here? It's but, Berkeley and it's 1972, and we're on the brink of real social revolution. Sorry, Dr. Trix, let me start at the beginning. The eternal cycle of starting at the beginning. At approximately 1855. When? Tonight? Yep. Tonight, a male suspect was seen crashing his car, a late model Toyota wagon, into the concrete wall of a two-year-old Berkeley Art Museum and Pacific Film Archive, interrupting the premiere of Maya Darren's Medusa Haiku. <laughs> the car door cracked open, reported Miss Darren, and the driver staggered away, possessed, she believes, by the divine gods of Haiti. Colorful report. He hasn't yet returned, though he left behind a uh, never, never mind. What? Look, Miss Trix, I don't know what you want me to say. Jimmy J, have you heard of riboflavin? Why, did someone say I did? <laughs> Tell me, have you met our Matrix artist, Dan Flavin? Dr. Trix, I'm a janitor. I mean, literally a janitor. And my wife yes? is a janitor's wife. Then answer me this. Have you heard that scientists here on the Berkeley campus have invented a replacement for? For me? Like a robot or something? No. Robot janitor. No. A replacement for the old electric light bulb of Thomas Edison. Look, I'm here from Georgia, the land of rich peaches and much capitalist bullshit. There I was born without electric light. My mother had only the village nurse to guide baby Jimmy J into a cruel, dark, hot landscape. I'm talking, of course, of course, about the modern fluorescent light. You got me there. Wait, that man must be a scientist. Look at his coat. He can explain it, explain it better than I can. Dr. Trix, you explained just fine. OK, fluorescent lights are the long tubes recently invented by NASA to provide illumination for the space program. Tubes give me the creeps. You're shivering. Give me a flashlight any old day with a double A battery. <whistles> Some crash, eh? A terrible dust up. Yes, the collision is the collage. <laughs> you were at the Gordon Lightfoot meet and greet. I am a scientist, and my focus is on understanding media. But I'm something of a quick study, and I couldn't resist the fun of a Gordon Lightfoot meet and greet. Matrix, this is Marshall McLuhan from University of Canada. Oh, you're Canadian. Then you won't know anything about NASA or vitamins. Try me. All right, is there a NASA Canada? We are all one big nation today with our TV addiction and our long, cool, fluorescent tubes dusted with moon dust. Well, you know, when the rockets filled with Neil Armstrong landed, a terrible music hit the campus of Berkeley. Not, not music, not Gordon Lightfoot music, but what we in Toronto call inhabitative noise. You seem very familiar, Marshall McClure, with Gordon Lightfoot's ouvoir. He's been looking like a queen in a sailor's dream, and he don't often say what he really means. He hasn't been to Berkeley Museum as often as he used to. Oh, now I know who you're talking about. <laughs> The gallery girls would tease me that I had a new boyfriend, folk singer, Gordon Lightfoot. Have you asked yourself why Gordon hasn't been to see you in so many months? If you read my mind, Marshall McLuhan, what a tale my heart could tell. Oh, who needs him? Matrix here has got a new show with an American artist we're nuts about. Just like a paperback novel, the kind the drugstores sell. As one Berkeley professional to another, will you help me, sir? The vacillation is in 
the visage. <laughs> Have you ever seen or touched the fluorescent light? I have, Miss Trix. And? Like TV, they are the cooler emblems of a new cybernetic age. Our ancestors used heat, tamed dragons, roasted meat on spits, had sex. In our age, the temperature drops way down. Look, fluorescent lights are the devil's dick, Miss Trix. <laughs> Bulbs filled to bursting with a miasma, a thick, crummy miasma. They'll wilt a cabbage at 30 paces. Break a tube and you die screaming. That miasma could wilt a full-size sequoia if one chose to harness fluorescence for evil. But luckily, the miasma doesn't know its own strength. Miss Trix, Dr. McLuhan, what are you driving at? I woke up this morning and I said to myself, May, for I am Matrix, founder of the Matrix program. <laughs> May, it's your day off. Well, you better go down to the museum, see what's going on. So he came in. And I came in and... Wait, was the disoriented driver? Are you trying to tell me? My con Dios. Was the driver Dan Flavin, the one they call the painter of lights? <laughs> Wait here, please. Do I wait as a witness or a suspect? Wait, wait. nearby the car, sir. But inside the car, there's miasma. I would never ask you to endanger your health, Jimmy J. Just get over there! All right, I'll go stand near the death car. Heavens to Betsy. Dan Flavin and his quest for a new vitamin has led to this car crash. Wasn't there an American cartoon where they say, which way did he go, boss? Which way did he go? Ironic how I, a respected West Coast curator, <laughs> am reduced to acting like a private eye in a film noir movie like Kiss Me Deadly. Who gets burned in a three-way strip? Dr. Trix, a few questions from the press. Why not? I'm Bob Bishop of the Berkeley Barb. The radical underground press. I will say goodbye for now. I'm here on a Fulbright, interpreting the ways our two countries differ. And I have a full load, as you say here. The coursework alone must be ample burden, Mr. McLuhan. In Toronto, we say, the coursework is the corsage. <laughs> Bob Bishop of the Berkeley Barb. Dr. Trix, is your protege, Dan Flavin of New York, smuggling the new fluorescent lights into the museum under the cover of darkness? Dan Flavin is not my protege. He belongs to the world like all great artists of his stripe. I'm but the humble curator flicking a switch onto 1972. Yeah, sure. Does the university receive funds from NASA? Oh, certainly not. Uh, I'm with the Matrix program, and we're doing a show with Dan Flavin. That's all I know. I mean, I know my Michael Freed and my Clement Greenberg, and now that it's 1972, my Linda Knocklin. Does this Marshall McLuhan work for NASA? The uh, Canadian man? Bob, you grew up in the shadow of the atom bomb, didn't you? Yes. From an early age, I, a baby boomer, ducked and covered under the school desk, or if I was at home, under the sturdy tool bench my dad had put up in his basement. <sighs> Did dad or mom, for we must not discount the power of the woman, ever tell you about vitamins or uh, give you one or more to swallow? Flintstones vitamins. Here we are, 
and the last rays of the sun. Can you feel the heat dying on your face? Yes. The dying June sun. Sunlight is a potent source of vitamin D. In grade school, they used some of the letters for the vitamins' names. There was vitamin C for orange juice, uh, B for beans, A for apple, D for... Um, there were so many letters left out. I felt really sorry for them. I really did. Under the desk, you felt sorry for them. Kissing my ass goodbye, I felt ever so sorry for F, G, H, I, J, etc. All the letters that never got vitamins. Hmm. Well, Dan Flavin is a talented sculptor using his art world to push to provide a place here at UC Berkeley to help others invent a new site-specific vitamin, which we are calling riboflavin. Riboflavin. Isn't that a thing already? Is it? You know, Dan Flavin was one of twin brothers, and the other one died. I actually don't know that much about Dan Flavin. Why not ask a woman? Anais Nin! Yes, and this is the Toyota that Dan Flavin stole to make love to me in. That's a barefaced lie! Is it, Dr. Tweaks? It was a lovemaking site-specific in its details. <laughs> And what do you care, Dr. Trix? I, Anais, have loved many men, from Henry Miller to Gore Vidal to Charles Mingus and Jackson McLow. Even my own father, if my legend is true. <laughs> Yet, no man has moved me such as the young Dan Flavin. I see. Well, perhaps the Gordon Lightfoot. <laughs> if I could read your mind, girl. What a thought my mind could tell. Uh, nothing annoys Gordon as much as a fan who can't remember his lyrics or makes them up. His singing voice is a tenor perfectly suited for our cool, minimalist era. Yes, like a Canadian sunset. His actual delta of Venus is small, quite small, when compared to those of Maclo or Flavin. You will never be a Matrix artist. You are far too presumptuous. Miss Nin, you've lived in California for nearly 30 years. What changes have you observed in your decades of sexual experience? The long beard on the men, like yours, Bob. Dan's twin brother was called Robert, but little Dan couldn't pronounce it and called him Ribo. So sad. You almost act as if there was a tragedy in the Flavin family. Young Ribo died of polio. The chicken. No, the disease, polio, not pollo. In Spain, when twins are separated, we call it the sundering of the two. Impressive. Old Spanish saying, take what you want, saith God, but pay for it. God bought Dan Flavin a box of lights, the brand new miasma tubes in pastels and primary colors, and Flavin lit up the sky with them. No wonder Dan Flavin feels such torment. Here he is, Dean of American Minimalism, yet his brother's in coma, gathering dust. I can still hear Rebo scream out, Dan, Dan, can't you invent something? A vitamin or something. The screams of a man drained of life. And name it after me, cried his brother. Didn't you say something earlier in the play, May, about how one always has to start from the beginning? Very meta, Ms. Tricks. <laughs> yes, I did. I remember now. The eternal cycle of starting at the beginning. Ms. Tricks, Ms. Tricks, the press conference is starting and no one can find Dan Flavin. Probably still installing. 
He had nothing to do with this car crash, nothing. Or my name isn't Mabel Trix, and this isn't my personal assistant, Kevin Killian. <laughs> designed this building. I slept with him. It's coming back to me now. He was a brutalist, just like the heavy concrete that stopped this, how do you say, Flavin's, how do you say, hot rod. What strange green light hovers over this concrete creation. Miss Nin? Yes? The building was designed in 1970 by a Mario Schiampi, a mere two years old, like my little boy at home. Yes, Mario. I gave myself to him, and he was like a boy at Christmas to whom Santa had delivered his first architecture set of glass, concrete, and steel. <laughs> Let us disperse and leave this scene. Kevin, how do I look? <coughs> Lovely. Frazzled. <laughs> like you're hiding something. Has uh, Gordon Lightfoot been located? He swore to me he would sing some of his folk hits. Like Early Morning Rain. Carefree Highway. For loving me. If you could read my mind, girl. <coughs> What, what a, a tale, tale my, my thoughts, thoughts would tell. tell. Just like a paperback novel. The, the kind the drugstore drug sell. In a castle dark. Dr. Trix, reporters are waiting under the huge Hans Hoffman over there. I hate to leave you like this. Go and do your duty as the first female curator in Berkeley. Will Gordon Lightfoot be there? Follow me. Maybe we'll find Dan Flavin. I, for one, would welcome that opportunity. It's growing dark. Soon the whole world will be growing, glowing green with radiation. Or blue, if Marshall McLuhan is correct. Jimmy J, where'd you get yourself off to? I declare, Jimmy J, you are the hardest man to pin down. Why, hello. Hi, y'all. I'm Lady J, and my husband is your janitor. You know him, little bruiser of a guy, Jimmy J. Of course I do. He's the heart and soul of the Berkeley Museum. But now he's AWOL. He had a break at 6, and I was supposed to meet him in the janitor's closet. I was right on time, and where was he? Don't know. It's like he's being held hard. Held help! Hard help, in. Lady J! <laughs> I'm like stuck to this old death car. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't seen him. He does like the salad bar at the student center, though. I put up his lunch every day in a brown burlap sack, like they do where we come from. He don't need no salad, whatever that is. Bar, salad bar, invented in Berkeley in 1964. The salad bar is the modern day equivalent of the smorgasbord of the Scandinavian Viking people. I don't like salad bars. That's government lies about me. Kevin Killian's bullshit, man. Everything's a modern day version of something superior. What happened to love? The love of a good woman? Jimmy J, come and get it. Lady, is that your name, Lady J? Yes, like Lady Bird Johnson. Ah. Well, I've worked for Dr. Trix for two years now, ever since the opening of the museum, and the first Matrix artist I'll have you know was Ursula Schneider. How many are you up to now? Oh, goodness, we've done so many. Dan Flavin is Matrix 6. Or is that 7? That is a lot. But when I see the green lights in the sky, I get a little apocalyptic, Mr. Killian. There's a man in the forest over there, by the way. Oh my god, that's our Matrix artist stumbling from the trees! Dan Flavin! Where, what is the, what I don't need, can you, where, where do I go from here? And don't forget, there's me over here! Poor boy, you've suffered a little bump on your head. May I feel? If you must. 
My mom taught me phrenology long ago in the backwoods of Georgia. It's the art of picking up the vibes of a man from the bumps in his lap. I mean, on his head. He looks so woebegone. And you, Dan Flavin, are complicated. The one bumps brand new woman of the South. Very complicated he is. I'm not a complicated lady. I'm just an ordinary guy whose twin died of polio. So I seek a way to bring him back to planet Earth with a new, forthcoming, site-specific vitamin named after him. I have known and loved many artists, minimalists, all of them, where it counted, in their lack of true value. It is here at Berkeley that multiple vitamins were developed, and now I want them to make me a Flavin vitamin. Find them and bring them to me. Hey, I'm still looking for my husband, Jimmy J. You know, he's probably at the Hotel Durant. He likes to go there and eat from the salad bar. Lies, untruths, <laughs> lies of Nixon dimension. My scientists. We'll find him, Skinny. Is there not a riboflavin already? People keep saying that, Anais, but I don't think so. Henry Miller said, Anais, the inventor. My brother was called Ribo. <gasps> Raibo, Flavin, Polio? Did you know him? He was my lover. <laughs> like most American men born in the 30s. No, 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 Raibo. <laughs> Raibo had very little experience with women, you see, because of his illness. Maybe that's just what he told you. Men are lying dogs. <laughs> he was in the Navy, and the Navy was in me. Like molecules in your lightsaber, Dan Flavin. We used to see him nightly on the docks and wonder who would be the first to explore the crevices, the edges, the curls of his body. Some say that I am the greatest American artist, but in my heart I know I'm but a stand-in for my more talented twin. Elvis says the same. Elvis Presley. <laughs> Twins lie conjoined inside each other like chrysanthemum stalks bundled from market. Twins and triplets were my meat when I walked Navy Pier. Your brother was strongman matrix artist. His little arms and legs were nothing, weak, flapping like flypaper. <laughs> but perhaps in contrast, his qu'est-ce his poteau, was vast like the North Pole Dan Flavin. <laughs> With many... <laughs> around to give it noble strength and intensity, like a hundred stocks of mums bundled together for market. Well, I'll be. Flash that light in my eyes, make me feel even a thousandth part of the dazzle I felt with your dead twin boy. If that is polio, every man in America needs it. So you're from France. Born under the same. Do you know Nikki de Saint Fall? Tell me more about Ribo, the man who destroyed me. Well, top scientists from the Berkeley Biochem Department and the Physics Department arrive at 8 p.m. sharp to combine their flasks of atomic miasma, and from the four corners of the Earth, they come with crystal tubes open at one end. I see, for the ultimate cocktail. And from the Nobel Prize of Sweden, I bring you Stephen Hawking walking toward us before his diagnosis, bringing the beaker of DNA he invented. Stephen! That is Stephen Hawking? No, that's, the, that's the Matrix janitor. <laughs> Trapped in a web of Berkeley lies, I saw me a vision. I say a vision to rival that of Oppenheimer and Edward Teller, the Berkeley men who brought forth the atom bomb. I tell you this, I, Jimmy J of Georgia, He's a strong, handsome man, but he's been through tray ordeal. Well, tonight is the night. <coughs> Where is the beaker of DNA? Here it is, like an alphabet soup of the soul. <laughs> Green rays of fluorescent light penetrate the concrete hulk of the museum. And I have seen, look from the forest floor, animals bringing gifts of acorn and squash. 
the healthy food which the riboflavin is derived. From cold Canada comes the media theorist Marshall McLuhan, author of The Medium is the Massage. <laughs> he brings with him a large cup of maple syrup and Canadian club. Pour it into my beaker, McLuhan. Hurry, do, and don't be stingy, baby. The tedium is the tiramisu. It's going to blow! <laughs> Rub it on the rearview mirror. On the rear view. Rub it on. Like this? We will consult the modern day gods of speed and resurrection. I've spent 40 days and 40 nights in that damn car, so I've been vouchsafed a revelation. The mirror. It's the mirage! <laughs> once, what was once hot is now cool. The garish is the garage! There you are, you little rascal. Where have you been? Never mind. I know you were at the salad bar. See, I know your little temptations. Yeah, I, I was at the salad bar. Like you don't you fool me with your disappearing act. Now hush up. This man is about to invent a new vitamin. Yeah, I saw it in a vision at the salad bar. <laughs> the Manon is the mayonnaise. The Manon is the mayonnaise. <laughs> Dan Flavin, you bad boy. <laughs> you cracked up your car to give your curator a scare. Is that riboflavin? It needed a woman's touch, a woman with experience, and a woman with innocence, a curator's naivete. It is ready. <laughs> but I am missing a man. The Apollo of our day with the cool mechanical voice of the 70s. No, I saw him at the salad bar. <laughs> Here he comes. <laughs> Were you missing me, May Trix, or the Gordon Lightfoot of your imagination? He is Gordon Lightfoot, <laughs> the John the Baptist of riboflavin. Sing, Canadian brother, sing. Don't ask me who I miss. Just as my dreams of a woman-led matrix come true, Gordon, I'm here. The eternal cycle of starting at the beginning. Hi, everyone. I'm Gordon Lightfoot from Canada. <laughs> if you could. Read my mind, love. What a tale my thoughts would tell. Just like a paperback novel, the kind that the drugstores sell. In a castle dark, or a fortress strong, with chains upon my feet. But for now, love, let's be real. I never thought I could feel this way. And I've got to say that I just can't take it. I don't know where we went wrong, but the feeling's gone. And I just can't get it back. I had a vision of an active, committed poet's theater that would change the world, and yet it still seems to be 1972. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, behold, I give you Riboflavin!